is it worth it paying the extra money for the 360mm version of Cougar's Poseidon GT AIO liquid cooler? How much more performance does it actually offer over its 240mm version that I happened to review not too long ago? What are the pros and cons? My friends, we're looking at the Cougar Poseidon GT360. Currently, it can be had for about 120 to 125 US dollars, as far as I am aware of. The GT240, on the other hand, costs only about 100 dollars and really managed to convince me the last time around. Will this also be the case with today's GT360? It's nice to see a lot of things included here, meaning we get the AIO unit itself, the three fans for it, the installation guide along with mounting kits, including a bit of thermal paste, and last but not least, a fan splitter cable, as well as a small and primitive ARGB controller. As usual, we are once again dealing with an aluminum radiator that also comes in at our standard thickness of 27 millimeters. The radiator appears to be fairly well built and is also aesthetically pleasing. I'd like to point out though that the fins are not of the usual type out there. Instead of rounded fin edges, we see close to right angled ones on here, which according to the manufacturer should increase the efficiency of heat transfer. The water block slash pump in its core is very very likely based on Aztec's design. So we're not exactly looking at a brand new in-house design that would come with certain risks. Sure, the choice of going with Aztec might be a boring one, but it's a proven one, especially in terms of reliability. But everyone's opinions will surely differ on that subject. The aesthetics of the pump, or rather water block, isn't really my cup of tea to be honest. Even though it goes to show that Cougar certainly has tried making the water block stand out by going with their so-called infinity mirror effect. I wouldn't go as far and say this is ugly, but it doesn't necessarily meet my personal taste. I'd also like to point out that the illuminated pump head with the Cougar logo on it is rotatable, so that you could easily readjust it if your AIO, let's say, needs to be installed upside down for some reason or whatever. At first glance, both on the radiator as well as on the pump unit, there appear to be metal fittings in place, but those primarily only serve for cosmetics. As usual with Aztec units, the copper base is not nickel plated. The pump itself should be running with a max speed of 3200 RPM. The tube length is at a respectable 400 mm, and in addition to that, the tubes are also nylon braided for that extra premium feel and look. Now let's talk lighting. The pump connects via a 3-pin header, the lighting via standard 3-pin 5-volt ARGB connectors. By the way, only the water block lights up. The fans going by the model name MHP120 don't light up, and I personally don't mind that at all. The fans otherwise appear to be of decent quality and offer a max fan speed of 2000 RPM while also promising a very high static pressure. Accordingly, they're also a bit on the louder side, more on that shortly. All common and recent CPU sockets are being supported, including AM5 and LJ1700. I've installed this unit onto platforms by both AMD and Intel and carried out separate tests. The installation went smoothly on both platforms without any noteworthy difficulties whatsoever. Now should your logo be upside down, you could, as I've said before, rotate it until you're happy with it. So you really don't have to pay any attention to that during the installation. Very well, it's time for tests. CPU number 1 is the AMD Ryzen 7 3800X. CPU number 2, the Intel Core i9-13900K, but fixed at its 253 watt power limit. Following the test at max fan speed, is one at a fixed noise level of 40 decibels. Noise levels. Cougar's MHP120 fans, especially three of these, emit quite a bit of noise combined with the pump. So with the identical test system, I already was able to measure 60 decibels with the GT360. The GT240 on the other hand comes in at 53 decibels, which also is to be considered more on the louder side, still it's noticeably quieter. But to be fair, few of us really let our fans spin at their max RPM. 
As far as the pump is concerned, I do have to admit, there is certainly audible buzzing noise coming from it, therefore does not count to one of the quietest on the market, but when inside a closed case, you shouldn't be hearing much of it anymore. Temperatures at max fan speed with the AMD 3800X. Here in this chart it becomes obvious that pretty much each of the tested cooling solutions performs well. The results don't surprise me in the least. There's also only a single degree Celsius separating the GT360 from the GT240. Temperatures at max fan speed with the Intel 13900K. Starting off with Cinebench R23. At this point, I'd like to apologize for not having more CPU coolers in my 13900K charts to compare yet. I'm working on it. Surprisingly, I had to discover that the GT360 only performs marginally better than the GT240. That result would be expected if one were to run a 5 minute test, but not over 20 minutes respectively. The GT240 appears to be doing an extraordinarily good job here. When increasing the CPU load even further with Prime95, we're looking at a fairly comparable difference once more. The GT360 performing better but only by 2 degrees Celsius in my test. Temperatures at a fixed 40 decibels. Under Cinebench R23 load, the temperatures skyrocket due to the lowered fan speeds in order to achieve 40 decibels. But even here, the GT360 doesn't show too much of an improvement over the GT240. Compared to the Deepcool AK620 air cooler, the CPU certainly is running a lot cooler, though. With the Prime95 stress test running, the GT360 now finally manages to distance itself from the GT240 by a whole 3 degrees Celsius. That's a good result, even though I honestly expected a bigger difference. However, what this test also goes to show is that a quiet air cooler and even a quiet AIO liquid cooler barely is capable of cooling the i9-13900K, so you'd have to allow noticeably higher fan speeds and in turn accept overall higher noise levels of your system. Conclusion What can I say? The Poseidon GT360 doesn't exactly perform that much better than the GT240. My Core i9 CPU only ran a few degrees Celsius cooler with it. In theory, you could also view it this way. If you're content with the cooling performance offered by a 240mm AIO, you could lower the fan speed on the 360mm AIO down to the performance level of the 240mm unit. By doing that, you end up with the same cooling performance but a quieter system. This most likely is the greatest advantage of having a larger cooling surface. Other than that, I can certainly recommend the Cougar Poseidon GT360, but would also like you to know that there's tons of alternatives on the market. At the end of the day, as so often, it simply comes down to pricing and preference overall. With that said, thank you very much for watching everyone and until the next one.